Brethren, praise the Lord. I appreciate God for the life that he gives us every moment that we interact with his word. And I'll take this moment to say a word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for the brethren. Thank you for the brother. Thank you for the sister who is tuned in now. And you pray that you bless us as we interact with your word, particularly about the Palm Sunday, when our Lord Jesus Christ triumphantly entered Jerusalem in power. And we pray the Lord who will enter into our lives with power and so that we shall continue loving and serving you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we've been having a season called Lent season and this season is winding up. It winds up into now what we call um, Holy Week. And Holy Week starts with a day called Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is the day when we commemorate our Lord's entry into Jerusalem with power. You know, Jesus had been out there doing ministry. He had been out there all over the place, going to Capernaum, going to all places, preaching and teaching and healing. And now, during this final week, Jesus comes back into Jerusalem because it was in fulfillment of the prophecy that he would be nowhere else but all but in Jerusalem. Now, this Sunday that we call Palm Sunday, Jesus enters Jerusalem in power and we read the Gospels in Matthew chapter 21, triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Mark chapter 11, verses 1, following Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Luke chapter 19, verse 28, we read about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and John chapter 12, Jesus enters there. Now friends, this is a matter of significance. When you find the four gospel writers writing about something and very consistently, it was a matter of urgency, it was a matter of importance. And so these gospel writers write about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem because it was of utmost importance. It was of utmost significance. And so this Sunday, Palm Sunday, is the Sunday when he arrives there and he enters Jerusalem and his followers, very many people, the Bible talks about a mammoth gathering that he gathered and the Bible mentions when you read this Matthew, when you read Mark, when you read Luke, when you read John, that people gathered with the tree leaves and these tree leaves are called palm leaves and they were shaking them, shaking palm leaves. And the reason why we as church these days, we recreate that, that actually the Lord Jesus Christ entered and in power and his followers used palm leaves, branches to honor him as king. And actually we shall see a little later that palms were very, very important in the Old Testament times. So this day, the Holy Palm Sunday begins what we call the Holy Week. The Holy Week events begin on a Sunday when Jesus enters there and he enters the temple. It depends on which gospel writer is writing. Some, one gospel writer says he enters, he looks around and sees what people are doing, sees how they are selling, and then he goes away. And then tomorrow, on Monday, he comes back and does the work of cleansing and he does that. And this is very, very important event for the church. So this Palm Sunday celebrates the arrival, celebrates the coming in. And of course, Jesus was coming in to celebrate the Jewish Passover feast. It was one of the feasts, and it was then that it, 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 connect, it connects very well with the scripture, because Jesus Christ was a Passover lamb the Passover lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And remember the Passover lamb in Egypt that um, was slaughtered, blood was smeared on the doorposts, and it was salvation for the Jews that the angel of death passed over and the Jews survived. Now, Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ, friends, is our lamb of, our lamb, our lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world that we may survive, that we may be alive. And so it is given significance, this 
uh, ceremony, this celebration is given, by, is given significance by all the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so this story of the triumphant entry of Christ into Jerusalem attracted a big crowd, like I've already said, and very many people came singing and singing what? They were singing Hosanna in the highest. Second thing is, as they were singing, they were waving and, you know, uh, waving palm leaves. Sign to the king who is coming and singing Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. And Hosanna, I have written here, those original languages, Latini, Greek, and even Hebrew, the word is meaning save now, O Lord. And remember, the Jews had been under the Roman rule for a very long time. And so they were expecting for a Messiah, they were expecting a king to come and save them. And so this time Jesus entering, he enters and they're singing, save now, O Lord, save now, O Lord, Hosanna, 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 save now, O Lord. But unfortunately, they had not got the point. Jesus comes, he's not riding on a donkey, he's not riding on a, on a, on a horse, a horse which is a, a war animal. Jesus comes riding on a donkey. You read it in Matthew, you read it in Mark, you read it in Luke, you read it in John. He comes riding on a donkey. Now, a donkey is a sign of peace. Listen to me, peace. And so he comes as the king of peace. Remember Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, they had talked about his name. And one of the names is, he is the prince of peace. And so our Lord Jesus Christ enters Jerusalem in a power, but a prince of peace. Unfortunately, the people that are gathered thought that Jesus was coming to set them free from the Roman rule. And the reason why, you will discover later as I wind up, that actually the people who shouted Hosanna, 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 are the very people that shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Why? Because actually they thought that actually Jesus was not meeting their intention. And so people, the Bible also says that actually some of them lay, removed their coats and laid them on the ground. He would walk on them. A sign of, uh, you know, kingship, a leader that is coming to set his people free. So Jesus comes as a prince of peace, riding on the donkey, and it had been prophesied by Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, that a lowly king comes, coming to Jerusalem, and that's what it is. And so people kept waving palm leaves and their coats laid on the ground. Jesus comes walking over them. Now in John chapter 12, verse 13, the Bible mentioned something. People kept shouting, blessed is the king of Israel. Blessed is the king of Israel. And indeed, Jesus comes as king. Jesus comes as king of kings. In Mark chapter 11 verse 10, the Bible says, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Coming kingdom of the our father David. So, Christ entered Jerusalem as an important guest. He comes to Jerusalem as an important guest. He enters Jerusalem as king and lord. And so why we celebrate, listen to me, friends, that Jesus is, we are just commemorating that. And as he entered Jerusalem and he did tremendous work in Jerusalem there during the Holy Week, cleansing the temple and, you know, doing lots of things, purifying and giving messages of warning, giving messages of rebuke, giving messages of, you know, warnings most of the time. He was actually telling them, you need to repent and put yourselves right. And so the moment Jesus comes into our life, we allow this to happen, like he entered, that the Bible, it says, he cleansed the temple. He chased away the money changers, he chased away the robbers, he changed, I mean, he was saying, why should you turn my temple into a den of robbers? And so it is something that actually Jesus comes to do in our lives to put them in order. And so friends, at this time, I just want to appeal to you that as you celebrate the Easter, when Jesus comes in, he does the purification, he does the cleansing, he does the encouragement, he does, he puts you in order. Where there was disorder in your house, in your life, Jesus removes the junk 
Jesus removes the dirt. Jesus comes, intends to put you in order, to sort you out. You remember, he sorted out the, the, the mad man, you know, the, the one who had the demons, century, I mean, the, the, the legion. And the way they were, Jesus chased them out, the man came back to order. Now, Jesus comes to put you in order. Jesus comes in to put me in order. And so this is the moment why we are celebrating the Easter. This is why we are celebrating the Palm Sunday. And so let me finish with five things here. One, this Palm Sunday message comes to fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 in the Old Testament. And because he talks about the king coming. And so it's about the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Old Testament, meaning that the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New Testament. Number two, recognition of Jesus' role as king. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And when he comes as king into your life, he sorts you out. And so allow him as king of peace, peace of, I mean, a peaceful king to come into your life, to come into your house and sort you out. Number three, this event of the Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry, was a preparation of the events ahead. You know, during the Holy Week, it culminated into Jesus' arrest, Jesus' um, you know, suffering, Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus' burial, Jesus', and then eventually on Sunday morning, Jesus' resurrection, and that is at the center of our Christianity. Point number three, it also shows that there is hypocrisy in humans. And this is what I mean here. Hypocrisy in human beings. This is where I said earlier that these people, Jesus coming in there shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Save now, save now, Lord. They are praising him. Can you imagine? And then there are the very people later who say, crucify him, crucify him. And so friends, you discover that actually the Bible talks about a human heart as very, very deceitful. In Jeremiah chapter 17, that the heart is so deceitful beyond. And so human beings, can actually praise you, can lift you up, can do everything. But then in the moment, someone changes and turns to do something otherwise. Now, friends, your trust can be wholly put on God. But human beings can be so deceitful. So these ones were lifting Jesus up and praising him and the devil people. But can also say, can you also imagine even the betrayers are in there among his people? Judas Iscariot, because it was during this week that we discovered that actually Judas Iscariot was one of the twelve and he betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, human beings, we can depend on people, but there are cases, there are areas where um, people cannot be dependable. Now, if you are dependable, continue being dependable in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you a husband? Are you a wife? Continue being dependable. But these people also teach us that actually there are people who keep shifting goalposts. So I pray that actually God helps me and you, that we should not, that we should not betray our Lord, that we should not crucify him again, but we shall continue shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And may God bless us, friends. And finally, Jesus is our deliverer. He's, that's why we sing, Hosanna, save us now, O Lord. And Psalm 118 that I want to give you, Psalm 118, the Bible 118, uh, Psalm 118, verse 25, the Bible does mention something in the same line of Hosanna in the highest. Psalm 118, verse 25, and the Bible says, um, O oh Lord, save us, verse 25, save us now, I pray, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Now, it is about Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the, in the name of the Lord. Now, I was just opening my Bible here because it is just closed here. And so I encourage you to keep opening your Bible as well, that the Lord may continue saving you. And this Palm Sunday, to come with a message of salvation that Jesus puts you in order and that your house shall be reorganized in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that God blesses you and blesses us during this Easter season that we shall see the Lord working mightily and that you shall be dependable people, and that you shall continue in a purified manner to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may God be with you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>